So hello, good morning or good afternoon. So, but it's like, oh, okay, good afternoon. It's like 11 p.m. here in uh, Andalusia, a uh, certain part of Spain. So today, uh, but of course I need to say Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, my students. Kerkula, uh, Kerkula, Isa, and Hasna for joining my lecture on uh, environmental politics. And today we are going to talk about environmental conflict. This is uh, the third lecture of our in our course. Uh, but of course, because I'm still in Spain, so the lecture is through the online, particularly through the video lecture. But uh, next week, you will have like UCA one or uh, uh, exam one. And then on 28th of October, I will have my flight from Spain to Indonesia. And I think in the early of November, yes, in the early November, Mm, it's like on 3rd of November, we will have our meeting in person in class, okay? So do not uh, do not worry. We will meet on, uh, in, on 3rd of November in person, and we will have the course in person. So the topic of today is environmental conflict, and we can also uh, think about how to shift the conflict uh, into collaboration. Okay, but I think if I, I may have more time enough, you will just end. Uh, I will just end my lecture on how we can understand the conflict. And this is the level of the conflict. The first is cleavage. Cleavage means when, when we are different with the others. For example, the, uh, there are some people who support the mining industry while the others, they are. Again, they, they, they again, they are against the, the mining industry. This is like two groups of people. So the, they are in the different clip pages. And the second is conflict. Conflict is like dispute when you have different interests, when you have different opinions about something. Like I said before, some groups or one group, they are supporting the mining industry, while the others, they are opposing. So this is conflict. And the second is crisis. Uh, I mean, the third level is crisis. Crisis when there is a sanction, okay? For example, okay, because you do not support the mining industry, I will give you a sanction, okay? So you will be excluded from the decision-making processes in the region, in the local government, or in the central government. So it's like close to the crisis. For example, there is a sanction from one country to another. Okay, because we are under dispute, we have no agreement, we have different understanding. But, uh, your plans, your aeroplanes, like commercial aeroplane, cannot cross to my country, okay? At the same time, I will never cross your territory, my, your airspace, your airspace, your airspace territory. This like crisis, okay? And the second, the, the, the fourth, uh, the fourth uh, level is grave crisis. Grave crisis when there is the involvement of military weapons, for example, military personnel, but they do not use it. The deployment of uh, military capacity like army, air force, and navy in one region, but they do not use the, the uh, the weapons, they, but they, there is a de deployment into the dispute of natural resources of our environmental resources. That's what we call as real crisis. And the last, the peak of the, the, peak of the, uh, the conflict is war, where there is the involvement of military uh, equipments, military weapons, as well as uh, the, the pilots between, or even they are killing each other. I do not want to talk about this. So that then and then this is can be happening in the natural resource conflict. 
So we can have our uh, example, for example, Indonesia. Uh, when we have war in Aceh, for example, or we have when we have crisis in uh, east part of Indonesia, but particularly in Papua, those are actually related to the environmental conflict, environmental government, because there are disputes between the local population and the central government. And this is uh, the the brief uh, questions or some questions that we will answer during our lecture today. The first is, what do we mean by environmental conflict? And the second, what ideas come to your mind? Herkula, what, what ideas come to your mind, uh, Hasna and Iza, when you hear, hear about the terms of environmental conflict? And how do we distinguish between environmental conflict and natural resource conflict, or are they same or different? Okay, I do not know why these uh, slides. It's like bluer. Okay, actually, I I delivered this uh, this course already. So if you if we come back to the first slide, so I delivered this course already in Finland at the University of Eastern Finland under the under the topic of global conflict in an era of globalization. I was uh, invited at that time by Dr. Paul Pryor, uh, uh, one of the lecture in the Department of uh, Geography and Historical Studies at University of Eastern Finland. Paul is from Canada. So uh, he was invited me and now I, I deliver again my course here in my own course on environmental politics at Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. So when we talk about the environmental conflict, uh, environmental conflict can be broadly defined as social conflicts related to the environment. So we talk already. So everything, every conflict related to the environment, and we already talk about the environment, there are goods and services in which we have uh, Natural, we have renewable natural resources and we have also non renewable natural resources. So, every conflict related to the, uh, to, to the natural resources are actually those all are part of the natural uh, environmental conflict. So, and this is different ideas come from my professor, Ramoy, so Professor Muskarati from University of Eastern Finland, for example. She defines that the environmental conflict add uh, an environmental dimension to the conflict. Okay, for example, this conflict can be caused by dispute over plans that have an impact on the environment. So, planning when we have a planning, how should the natural resource or the environment be governed? And people they have different interests. Uh, they, they have different interests. For example, Hercula in your case, some people, they plan that, they, they think that, okay, our natural resources should be, should be, I mean, should be, uh, should be uh, managed by international investment. While the others, they think that, okay, now we should, we, uh, we should manage our own natural resources, not by uh, granting to the to the international investor to utilize it, so uh, this kind of dispute between two groups uh, in the planning on how the natural resources, natural resources or the environment should be governed, those are related to the environmental conflict. And the second, there there can be fighting over the natural resource, the, the over the control of territories and resources, for example. Uh, if there is one region, I do not know. I, I want to ask you, Kerkula, do you have like a region in your country in Liberia who are rich with the natural resources? And that, uh, that, 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 I mean, uh, that area is under dispute between, between two countries, for, for example, uh, between two neighboring countries, for example, we 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 can we can see the example from Nagorno-Karabakh. Nagorno-Karabakh is a, uh, the area of dispute between Azerbaijan and Armenia. 
it's free to hit the networks. We have also uh, uh, the, the area under dispute between Pakistan and India, what we call as Kashmir, and it is also rich with the natural resources. In, in, in Southeast Asia, we, we have an area under dispute between several countries. It is the South China Sea. Uh, uh, it, it, it is under dispute between China, the Philippines, Malaysia, as well as Indonesia. I talked with one of the Filipinos and, and she said, I do not want to call that area as South China Sea, but I just want to call it as uh, the Filipinos, uh, uh, the Filipinos Nazi, not not Nazi, the Filipinos, uh, the Filipinos Southwest. Okay, so because they are climbing each other, this is okay. Part of Mars, this is part of mine. So this is uh, on how we can understand the environmental conflict, and here you are. As I mentioned before, that in environmental politics, sometimes we use the political ecology perspective. At the same time, we also use the environmental policy and the environmental government. And there are two perspectives on how we can understand the environmental conflicts. The first perspective comes from political ecology, and the second one is come from environmental policy. For example, if we talk about political ecology, the environmental conflict is related to the scarcity of natural resources and access of natural resources. What do you mean by the scarcity? So if the natural resources are uh, under depletion, uh, I mean, no, no anymore, uh, that natural resources, so people, they will fight to get that natural resources. Uh, what is the scarcity of natural resources? Let's say oil, for example. If the oil, are under depletion, okay? The scarcity of the volume of the oil, of the oil for, uh, for, uh, uh, for gasoline, for example, and then people will, will fight to get that, not, to, to control the natural sources. We understand the dispute between Sudan and uh, Egypt, for example, in Africa, uh, due to, uh, Due to the scarcity of the waters in the in the Nile scapers, uh, the two countries they are disputing uh, about whether uh, who have who have actually the most powerful control uh, to the to the water in the Nile River because the the water in the Nile uh, River uh, is essential for both countries and they are under the dispute. And the second access of the natural resources. Whether you or who can can benefit of natural resources, or because different people, different actors, they have different uh, benefits and power to get the benefits to the natural resources. They are under the, uh, they, they are under the dispute or under conflict. So from environmental uh, policy perspective, uh, 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 the the. The environmental conflicts is very much related to the depletion and degradation of environmental uh, resources. Some people, they want to use the natural resources to get the benefit as many as they can, while environmentalists, for example, NGOs, they want to protect that natural resources from the degradation, so they are under the dispute. So I can give you the example, for example, of uh, uh, palm oil industries in Indonesia. So we use a lot of palm oil products in our daily life, started from brushing our teeth. We use palm oil component in our in our pasta, breasted pasta, and then our shampoo, our soaps, everything's combining the palm oil. But uh, industries, palm oil industries, they want to they want to expand the palm oil uh, plantation uh, into many uh, into uh, forested areas, into, into forest areas. Because why? Because it's beneficial for the society, for the economic growth of the region, as well as for the uh, for the economic growth of the nation. But environmentalists they think that if the palm oil expands to the expanded to the forest area, or to the direct forest, we will lose 
the biodiversity, like orang utan, Sumatran tigers, and the others. So this kind of groups they are disputing, okay? And this is from the implemental policy. So I think I already explained on how we can understand the implemental conflict from a political ecology perspective. And let me give you an example uh, about, so I already talked about the scarcity and access on, uh, on uh, so, but I think I will just highlight that implemental conflict from informal process, uh, putting self socialization I will just uh, skip this. In parental conflict, is a conflict in terms of, of access. Or this, the first one is scarcity, and the second one, from the political ecology perspective, in parental conflict is very much related to the access. In parental conflict, is a conflict in terms of access to and control of what environmental resources. I think you can understand about this. And this is a good definition on how we can understand access. I ask you, Regula, for example, to read this access theory. Access is about all possible means by which a person is able to benefit from resources. Okay, uh, so people they have similar access. I mean, they, they they have a similar situation to get benefit from, let's say, uh, forest, for example. However, they have different access. They have different powers. Some people they have no investment. They have no labors. They have no technologies. They have no access to the authorities, and they are just ordinary people in the society. While the others, first of all, the others group of people, they are close. They have close relation to the central, to the power, to the local government, central government for the permit. They have also investment from the bank, okay, to get the loan from the bank for their business activities, and they have also technologies, technology like excavators and others, for example, uh, maybe ships to commute the logs. And they have, they are also uh, uh, ha have a position in the society because they are the leaders, for example, of uh, a local ethnic. My question, who will get the benefit more from the forest? Of course, people who have more power, like technology, capital, market, labor, knowledge, authority, and social identity. So uh, Hasna and uh, Hasna and Iza, for example, you will be graduated from IGO. While your friend, for example, at senior high school, they didn't go to, 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 to college, they didn't go to the university. My question, who will have more possibility to access? Of course, you, because you have knowledge, you have your diploma in uh, governmental studies, for example. So. Uh, our access uh, access is not about how you can uh, how you can enter into a forest, but access is about what kind of benefit you can get more than the others from the natural resources, from the forest, from the fish, from the ocean, from the atmosphere, from the rivers, from, from everything, from the from the mining area. So uh, access is kind of you know an eye of uh, and land grabbing also. Kerkula uh, asked me about land grabbing, and I hope that you can present your understanding on land grabbing. Okay, so let's see. Okay, uh, and then uh, this is uh, I will give you an example about the scarcity of tropical peatland and access to palm oil plantation in Asia. So uh, maybe I will, I will just jump. I will I will not. let me let me see. So here, here you are. Which example I will give? So here you are. So Indonesia is the largest area of tropical peatland. Here, put peatland. Is it, uh, you can see here's the red colors are the distribution of peatland in Indonesia. Okay, here are you are the distribution of peatland in Indonesia. What what is peat? Peatland it's peat swamp forest. It lobes. It's like, uh, it's like uh, a peat swamp forest is located in the low lower. In the low uh, land rainforest, uh, it is cumulative of over millennia from the branches uh, and uh, the trees, the dry trees, for example, and they, they become an important ecosystem for the carbon storage. Okay, if they are in the wet condition, it's like a mangrove important uh, important ecosystem. 
However, the the habitat is under threat with palm oil as the mine crop currently 2.5 million hectares of palm oil exists in the Midland in Asia because there is high international demand of palm oil, particularly palm oil from the international market. Palm oil development is a way on, but at the same time, palm oil also is a way on property eradication in rural areas. Without planting palm oils, maybe but the families in the rural areas in Malaysia, like in Borneo and Sumatra, as well as in some part of Sulawesi and Papua, they may not be able to send their kids into college. So they are depending their economic uh, income from the palm oil. Okay, 15 million, according to Indonesian Palm Oil Association, 15 million people are depending their love on palm oil. Okay, uh, and at the same time, the Indonesian government also push. Uh, the, the palm oil production because our government has a target of B30. What is B30? Biofuels, 30% of our fuels should be coming from the power sources and the power sources and, and, and the tax sources which refer to the palm oil. Okay. What is happening here? You can see here. So uh, palm oil currently, uh, we have like 14.9 million hectares of palm oil in Indonesia. Okay, 50%, 55% of this ownership owned by the large scale palm oil company. 40% owned by small holder, small and medium uh, holder of farmers. Okay, but actually they are not really uh, small farmers. They are, they are, they, they, they are, I mean, they are big player. Uh, who has an investment? I call this as elites, okay, local elites, like bureaucratic elites, uh, local politician, local businessmen. And the third is owned by SOC, uh, a state organization, a state, uh, state corporation. So it's like a business institution owned by the state, like uh, PTPA, or we call it. BUMN, Badan Usaha Milik Negara. If you can see here that the majority of the plantation owned by the large scale farm, uh, although the small and medium uh, farmers, they occupied 40% of the palm oil in the, uh, I mean, uh, from 14.9 million, but actually they are not really. Uh, Ordinary people who just have like one or two, two hectares. Actually, they are big players as well. Okay. And they have they, they have no refiners, refiners or millers. They have no uh, uh, they have no factory to to uh, to I mean to transform the crude uh, the 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 fresh fruit the fresh the the fresh fruit of palm oil, the best brand food of fruit of palm oil into uh into CPO, fruit palm oil. So all CPO owned actually by the large scale uh, company. All I mean all millers owned by the and also the export of palm oil under the large scale uh, palm oil uh, company. The problem is here so this is in terms of the access. In terms of it, it access unfair because of ordinary people, they have limited access. They have limited benefit. And from this perspective of scarcity, you can see that 2.0 million hectare of palm oil planted in the peatland areas. So what was happening? The forestation of purpose because they need to cut down the trees in the all land rainforest of the pit swamp forest, by diversity loads, pit decomposition. So uh, to plant the palm oil, you need to dry the pit plant, okay, by digging the channels or the canals, and as well as the thickish, okay, and the pit become dry. Once the pit land dry, there will be a uh, pit decomposition, the pit land um, producing the CO2. And moreover, if the peatland fires, the, the dry peatland is easily to be burned, and it will lead to the peatland fires and producing much more uh, CO2. You can see here that the palm oil refiners, 
uh, this is the production of palm oil in Malaysia from 2019, 20, and 21, and it's uh, increasing. Okay, it's mean that the demand from the uh, palm oil will, will be increased, increasing as well because the refiner the refining process is increasing. And from the CPO, it become uh, it goes to the com bi biofuel companies. This is news to the biofuel companies, and it's become B one hundred. From the B one hundred, uh, it it uh, the 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 biofuels the biofuel goes to the biofuel companies and mix it with the uh, oil with the I mean with the with the uh, uh, yes, with the with the oil to become the biodiesel. So currently, this is the, the increasing number of the biodiesel or, or biofuel. For example, uh, consumption in Asia from three million uh, to to ten more to ten uh, ten million. What is happening? And this is the future situation of expansion of palm oil in the peatland areas in Asia. So the mandatory regulation of B3 and the next B40 will be 40%. High demand of CPO in the local market and of palm oil moratorium. By 2030, there will be 20 million hectares palm oil. So currently 15 million, and it is expected by 2030 due to the demand from the international market as well as from the local market regarding the B30 and next B B40 policy. There will be 30 million hectares of palm oil, where the 35 percent of them will be planted will be planted in the land areas. Is this what uh, we want? Okay, and this is example of the access to palm oil. For example, so 55 percent of the Indonesian palm oil is owned by large scale palm oil. Okay. Those large scale palm oil are linked only to 20 palm oil companies. Can you imagine? Okay. So, this is the ownership of the nation, and this is the names of the company. So, those from the 50% of the nation palm oil plantation is owned by large scale palm oil. Those large scale palm oil are linked only to 20 palm oil company groups. Although small and medium farmers share about 40.6% of the ownership. They are not real smallholders farm, small and medium farmers. Smallholder and medium farmers only manage between two to twelve to twenty hectares of palm oil. But there are local elites who actually manipulate the ownership of SNAS 40%. Can manage between 25 up to 400 hectares, even 1,000 hectares. I wonder in Sumatra. So local elites refer to the business, political, and cultural elements. This is what we call us when ready and Karkun. I think on 20, so 28th of October, we still have, okay? And up, I think after Morris lecture, okay? So Morris will have his lecture during November and Karkula, he will talk about uh, land grabbing. As now, I hope you can talk about uh, theory of access and ESA, maybe you, you, you work together uh, on theory of access. Or, or maybe Hasna on theory of access and Isa can talk about the environmental justice. Okay, or yes, or maybe Hasna you can talk about uh, collaboration. Isa or Isa then can talk about access, <laughs> theory of access and curricula about land grabbing. Okay, so after more lecture, we will have question from you from Hasna about. What I mentioned before, you, you can choose as either uh, either responsibilization <laughs> or uh, collaborative government. And ESA, you will talk about the theory of access and curriculum, but talk with land grabbing after Morris. So Morris will, will deliver his lecture during uh, during during November, and you will deliver your lecture during uh, December. Okay. And this is uh, the, the environmental justice discourse of palm oil in social media, for example. So I divide the organization 
you know, to right-based NGOs and justice movement. Right-based NGOs are NGOs who who concerns on uh, who are involved in the RSPO. What is RSPO? Maybe we will talk later. But they are quite critical toward the issue of minority land grabbing, indigenous communities, public of land grabbing due to the expansions of palm oil. There are also concerns in terms of the issue of permits, for example, legal procedures of the palm oil, and as well as the recognition into the laws mm, that we have here. And this is uh, related to the representation. So many palm oils, they do not involve local workers uh, to, to, to work in their palm oil companies. And uh, there is also limited uh, freedom of labors uh, in the palm oil company. So I think that's all for today, but I will not continue. So because there are a lot of uh, example that I will and I I did not I didn't talk yet about on how to transform the conflict into collabor uh, into collaboration. So I just give you an example on how we can understand a conflict from the political ecology that is very much related to the scarcity and as well as uh, access. And I give you the uh, example already. And now let we uh, see our our my my class here. Wait a second. I need to have an access to the my class. Okay. So here. So I will just share. My our my screen again here. Where is the my class? Yes, here you are. So in the my class, this is the environmental country. Ah, you have an assignment. Let's see what assignment you have here. Environmental conflict. Please to answer. Uh, please uh, uh, do answer the three question that I address on the video lecture. Okay, then the, 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 the question that I, I mentioned before are here, okay? So I have uh, like three or four questions. I do not know exactly. Here are the question, okay? Uh, okay, please. Uh, what do we mean by environmental conflicts? What ideas come to your mind when you hear about environmental conflict and how we distinguish between environmental conflict and natural resource uh, conflict? And then maybe I will just add an equation here. How do you understand environmental conflict uh, from the perspective of uh, Political ecology, political ecology, particularly, particularly, par particularly, particularly related to a scarcity and access. Okay. So this is four question that I address. Okay. Please do answer the question. Okay. Thank you very much for today. And see you next time. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi